Hey there, welcome back. Now, in the previous video, we talked about scientific notation. Now, that's great, but it's kind of useless unless we know how to actually use it and do operations with it. You see, with scientific notation, we tried to make long numbers look smaller, look shorter, so that we could easily work with them. And we, we learned about it. We know that like 5 to, times 10 to the third power, um, what that, that means is that you're taking your whatever digits I've given you uh, to that whatever decimal is, one number, then decimal, then, then extra digits, and you're multiplying it by a factor of 10 or dividing it by a factor of 10 uh, to get what the original number is. So 5 times 10 to the third says, hey, take 5, literally multiply it by a factor of 10. So 10 to the third power, 1,000 in this case, and that would move the decimal place uh, for 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 that number, um, the idea being, if we're a base ten number system and you have a base of ten to some power, you can illustrate longer numbers in a more concise fashion. So five times ten to the third says take five, multiply by ten to the third. That would take the decimal place and move it three spots to the right. Uh, take all the negative exponents. Say take something like uh, I'll be on the board. But take a negative exponent says, hey, t take that number, multiply it by a factor of 10 with a negative exponent would be literally dividing by a factor of 10. It would take your exponent and move it to the left, whatever number of place values that negative exponent is. And we talked about in the last video. Now we get to use them in operations. It makes things a little bit nicer. Could we? Could we do all this work by writing out what that number is, writing out what this number is, and multiplying it? Yes. But that defeats the whole purpose of knowing scientific notation because you're trying to deal with smaller looking numbers um, in a concise fashion. So could you do it? Of course. Is there really a need for scientific notation math-wise? Well, I mean, not really. I mean, you just write really long numbers, I guess. Uh, but it, it gets easy to lose digits. It gets easy to make mistakes. And it takes a long time. So this is a time saver. That, that's what it is. It allows us to write concisely and it's a time saver. Now, how we do it, it's kind of it's really interesting. You see, when we say five times 10 to the third, it literally is a multiplication. You're taking five times a, a power of 10, a factor that's 10 to some power. Well, that's great. So if we're going to multiply two numbers in scientific notation, this really does mean five times 10 to the third times 3 times 10 to the fourth. Yeah, I know we use that x there, but that still means multiplication. Well, because multiplication is commutative and associative, and you do pretty much any order you want, you could really do 5 times 3 times 10 to the third times 10 to the fourth. You can just commute those. Well, well, that's interesting because we could just do 15 times, oh my gosh, you see it, you have common bases. Oh, what do we do? We're based on number systems, so it's always going to be 10 to some power. What do you do when you see multiplication? What do you do with the exponents? Well, we add them. That would be 10 to the seventh. So, five, can, now, can you do it right from here? 5 times 3, 15. 10 to the third times 10 to the fourth, that'd be, I see multiplication, should be adding 10 to the seventh. That's exactly what we get. So all we have to do to use scientific notation operationally, uh, if we're multiplying, multiply the numbers, add the exponents. That's it, all we do anyway. That's what we do the entire time. That's kind of cool. What we do with exponents is one level below what we see. What we do with numbers, our coefficients, you just multiply. So because of the associativity and commutativity of multiplication, we get to multiply our numbers, 15, and add the exponents for the same power of 10 that we have. And we're multiplying those. So we're adding 3 plus 4 and 7. That's it. Now, there is one issue. With scientific notation, you can't end with two digits like that. You have to have not 15, but 1.5. So this goes back to the last video, how we change that. So I want to end. I always think about where I want to end and then what I have to do to the exponent to to make it, what I have to do with the power of 10 to make it back to the original number. So I want to end with 1.5. I know it's going to be 10 to some power. Now, this number looks smaller than that number does. 1.5 is a power of 10 smaller than this. I have to undo that with that exponent. So 15 times 10 to the 7th needs to be 1.5 times 10 to the, it's going to take more power here to get the same number as this is. 
Think about that again. It's going to take more power here to get back the same number I'm trying to represent. This is 15 times 10 to the 7th. 1.5 times 10 to the... I need one more place value to make it back to that number. I need to go... Well, if I did this, I'd have the 7. So I need to do 1.5 times 10 to the... 8th power to make that the same number. So you would have to take this and move this 7 spots. So from 15, 7 spots to the right, 7 place values to the right. This started from 1 place value further to the left. I need 8 to make it to the same exact number in both cases. So if I'm going to readjust these num these digits, i got to be real conscious of what I'm doing with my, my place value and what, what I'm and conscious about what I'm doing with my exponent. So if I have to alter this number at all to make it one digit then a decimal, I might have to add or subtract to that exponent. Just think about what it would take to get back the same exact expression you're trying to represent. <clears throat> so we know what scientific notation means. We know that it's a multiplying by a factor of 10. Even if it's a factor of 10 to the negative power, it would be dividing. It's moving decimal places. We now know that with operations like multiplication, Multiply your numbers, add your powers. If you have to adjust the decimal, you also have to adjust your exponent. Let's talk about division. Same thing with division. Just like we did with all of our simplification in the last little video, we can still divide this. So that was used to be a decimal. Uh, 1.9 divided by 2.0, well, that's 0.95. So when we divide our numbers, we get 0.95 times all. Oh, hey, what you do is one level below what you see. I saw multiplication, I added. I see division, we have the same base. Man, it's connected with the multiplication. We can separate our factors just like we did in the last video. 10 to the third divided by 10 to the fifth. Let's see, same, that's common bases. Uh, I'm seeing division. What I do is one level below what I see. So I would have 3 minus 5. Do you remember that? 3 minus 5. That's fine. Well, that's a negative exponent. Is it okay to have negative exponents in scientific notation? Yeah, it's kind of what it's built on, is this idea of having positive or negative exponents representing place values. So we can multiply numbers and add exponents for multiplication. We can divide numbers and subtract exponents for division. We divided 1.9 times 2, we got 0.95. Uh, we subtracted 3 minus 5. Common basis, I saw division, I subtracted. That's negative 2. Now, does that look right to you? I hope the answer is no. Because we don't want 0.95, we want 9.5. That's going to be 10 to some power. Think about this. 0.95 times 10 to the negative second, I would have to move two decimal places to the left to get the, the number I'm trying to represent. I'd have to move two to the left. Now that I have 9.5, I still want to get this number out of it. How many place values do I have to move? Well, basically, I move that decimal. I'm making this look like it's one decimal to the right of where it's at. I'm going to have to move it an additional place value. Look at this. I have to move it one place value to the left just to make it to here. So that's giving me an additional movement to the left. That's a negative 3. So to get the same number out, this would be 2. I'd have to move it 1, 2, 3 to get the same exact thing out. So by adjusting your place value, I've got to adjust my exponent. In this case, if I'm going to make 0.95 into 9.5, well, I made this number look larger. I, this looks larger than that number. I'm going to have to adjust for it on my exponent, much like we did in the last video, um, counting whether we go right or left place value-wise and adjusting your factor of 10 to suit. So that's the idea. We can divide and subtract exponents for division. Now, a couple word problems to, to illustrate why we might use scientific notation. Uh, speed of light is, is crazy fast. Uh, the speed of light is 1.86 times 10 to the fifth miles per second which is insane. You say 1,001, and light has traveled 1.86 times 10 to the fifth miles. That's crazy. Now, we always hear, I mean, I always hear, I'm a kind of a Star Trek, Star Wars kind of guy, so you hear about a light year. How far does light travel in a year? Well, if it's 1.86 times 10 to, the, 10 to the fifth miles per second, that's that many miles every second. So one, 
two, three, four. You've just gone 1.86 times 10 to the fifth, and then another 1.86 times 10 to the fifth, and then another one, and then another one, and then it's 100, 186,000 miles a second. How far is that? Like a year? Well, for every second, you're going that many miles. How many seconds are in a year? Well, that's, that's you're adding and then adding and then adding the same amount for every single second. That's a multiplication concept. So if we want to figure out how many miles a year that the speed of light is, so how, what's the, how many, what's a light year? How many miles uh, light would go in a year? We would take the 186,000 or 1.86 times 10 to the fifth and multiply it by how many seconds there are in a year. Much like the first example, scientific notation is nice because it doesn't make you write out all the zeros and all the other numbers uh, with really large and really small numbers. The, those last ones sometimes, I mean, they, they matter. It depends on how specific you want to be. Uh, but a lot of times with, with huge numbers, we're not focused on the ones value or the tens value. We want to figure out approximately how much it is. Scientific notation does that nicely. We multiply the two digits that we're basing these uh, the scientific notation on. In this case, it's 5.859 times 10 to the multiplication of common bases. We see multiplication, we add the exponents. Multiply the numbers, yes, but your exponents get added. That's 5.859 times 10 to the 12th. Oh my gosh, that was miles a second, that's seconds per year, that's miles per year. So a light year is 5.89 times 10 to the 12th miles. That's crazy. If you had to write that out, hey, could you translate that back into a decimal notation? Because this is scientific notation. If you did, you'd have to move that's a small number, that's a factor of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Ten, mm, mm, mm. Thousands, millions, of five trillion, eight hundred fifty-nine billion miles in a year. Crazy fall. Uh, that's how far light would travel in a year, which I guess is a lot. How about another one? Uh, let's say that the this was the United States uh, gross domestic domestic product in 2016 was 18 trillion 569 billion 100 million dollars roughly. Uh, at the time, there was 323 million 100 thousand people in the United States. Let's see how much dollars per person that is. So if the entire nation produced this amount and there's this many people in the nation producing it, then what is that per person? Well, that's a division concept. We're going to take the amount of money there is and divide it equally among the amount of people. Now, the amount of people doesn't get all that money, uh, but speaking as, as the average here, we can do that. So the first thing we might want to do, I mean, we could do this straight up with a calculator, but sometimes you run out of numbers. Sometimes numbers get so large, you can't, you can't punch them in. Um, so scientific notation allows us a way to abbreviate that. So right now, if you haven't done it, abbreviate that in scientific notation. Do the same thing with this. So if I'm going to write 1.85691, that is a factor of 10 to the 13th smaller than the number I'm trying to represent. So I need to multiply by 10 to the 13th to get this to be the same as that. And let's, let's double check. So I 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, this one, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so 10 to the 13th. Now, the other one. Well, I'd have to write this as 3.231. So I want one digit in front of your decimal place. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
3.231 is a factor of 10 to the 8th smaller than this number. So I have to multiply by a factor of 10 to the 8th to get this to represent that number. So now, if I have this many dollars and I want to spread it amongst that many people, that's going to be a division concept. So we would divide this number, the gross domestic product, to figure out and by the number of people. When dealing with multiplication division, much like we've done in the last few videos, we can multiply or divide the coefficients, the numbers, and then use our exponent rules to deal with our bases. So we divide uh, 1.85691 1 divided by 3.231, and that's going to give us 0.5747 roughly. Times 10 to the... Well, what do you see? I mean, if, we, if, we see uh, if we see division, one level below that, subtraction. Let's see, 13 minus 8 looks like 5. That's 10 to the fifth. 13 minus 8 is 5. Now, that number's not quite right. You see, I, I don't want 0.5. I want 5 point. So I want 5.747 times 10 to the, 10 to the what? Well, look, we just moved our decimal place to the right. We just made this number look larger than it is. 5.747 is a power of 10 larger than what it should be. So I'm going to have to adjust that. I'm going to take away that power of 10. You see, when I did this, when I moved this from here to here, I basically multiplied by 10. Well, I need to undo that in the number if I'm going to represent the same number. I can't just move a decimal place and expect it to be a 5 still. I've got to undo that somewhere. Um, so instead of 0.5, I have 5 point. That's a power of 10 further to the right than it, than, it, than it was originally. I'm going to take off one of those movements to the right. That's the way to adjust for scientific notation. And you can check your work all the time. Move this digit, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spots. Or move this one, one, two, three, four spots, and you should get the same exact number. Should be in this case fifty-seven thousand four hundred seventy dollars. So move this from here, it would be five spots. One, two, three, four, five. Five place values. That's from this. Or from here, move it four. One, two, three, four. Either way, we get $57,470 per person in America, in the United States of America. Um, that's the, the way that scientific notation is used. It's not to change the operation. It's just to make the operation possible um, in a more concise fashion so that we don't have to write extremely long numbers. That's the idea. I hope that made sense to you. I hope you now can take, um, take any number and write it from scientific notation into standard notation or from standard into scientific. I also hope you understand that the operations are exactly what we deal with. Multiply or divide your coefficients. Use addition to add exponents when multiplying or subtraction to, to, um, to deal with your exponents when dividing. Other than that, we might have to adjust our place value from time to time in scientific notation. So just be conscious of we want one number then a decimal and adjust appropriately. You can always check your work by counting the decimals over and make sure they end at the same place value. That's how we check our work pretty, pretty easily. Anyway, um, we're, we're basically done with scientific notation. Next video, I'm going to talk about how you divide polynomials. So that's kind of a cool one. I'll see you later.